now and I ain't never gon' back down. I want it now and I ain't never gon' back down. I want it now and I ain't never gon' back down. I am no regular citizen. No, do you understand what you're witnessing? You cannot tell what the difference is. I want it all and I'm winning it. I do not care about opinions. Uh, time to make a few decisions. Do it so I can take your position. I'ma go get it. I'm punching and kicking. I keep on moving it off of me. Just do it and stop what I'm talking to. I'm not expressing no modesty. I can't see nobody stopping me. If there's a problem, I gotta solve it. Straight to the top, I can't see myself falling. I gotta grab it. There's no time for stalling. Number one, turn it down. Now I'm fired up I'm sorry brother, your time's up I see the top and I climb up I came from the asses, I rise up Rise up, rise up I want it now, I gotta rise up Rise up, I want it now, I gotta rise up Rise up, I want it now, I gotta rise up Rise up, I want it now, I gotta I'm gonna now, I gotta rise up Rise up, I want it now, I gotta I want it now, and I ain't never gon' back down I want it now, and I ain't never gon' back down I gotta go for the gold. I need to switch up the mode. I'm gonna win on my own. I'm in a whole nother zone. I reach the pinnacle. I don't have time, this is critical. It's time to finish you. I don't care who I just did it to. I gotta go for the gold. I need to switch up the mode. I'm gonna win on my own. I'm in a whole nother zone. I reach the pinnacle. I don't have time, this is critical. It's time to finish you. I don't care who I just did it to. I want it now, I got it. Said I'm fired up. I'm sorry your time's up. I see the top and I climb up. Came from the ashes, I rise up. Racing's virtual Richmond Raceway. We say good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to round five of the 2024 Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series. Well, as always, we're happy you're spending your Monday night with us here on Race Spot TV. We're alongside Derek Watson. My name is Evan Pasoko. Our producer downstairs is Joshua Lee. And Derek, first and foremost, happy to have you back with us in the RSR booth here for a full throttle cup Monday night as we get set for the short track challenge of the action track here at Richmond Raceway. Two weeks removed from Bristol, we're sticking with the short track theme but this racetrack could not be any more different than what we saw in Bristol. Going to be a unique challenge on the board tonight. No, you know, what will be the same though, Evans, the possibility of frustration and tempers. You know, over time, this track has changed names and had a shorter name. Now it's Richmond Raceway instead of Richmond International Raceway. But will not be shorter is the anger, the tempers, and the beating and banging. As we look at the schedule here, look at this. Texas up next and Talladega, Dover, Darlington. We're going to go from short tracks to big tracks very quickly. We will, and you talk about some of the old names uh, of this racetrack. Once upon a time, the Atlantic Rural Exposition Fairgrounds from 1946 to 1952. When this racetrack opened, uh, this is a notable date for Richmond because we will be back here for round number 17 of this championship on August the 5th when we get down to the end of the regular season. One of the few racetracks that does get a double dip, per se, 
on the calendar. That's something to keep in mind as well. Of course, it feels like we are still in the wee hours of this championship, but after tonight, going to be a quarter way through the regular season, and here is how the point standing shakeout coming into tonight. It was Agato Phillip, the race win at the Bristol Motor Speedway two weeks ago, his second of the year that keeps him on top of the playoff standings. Bradley Burke and Benazzi Major, your other race winners so far this season. Therefore, everybody else seeded by points, top 16 make the playoffs. Again, still far too early to hit the panic button, but I will say, Guys like Joseph Tice, Ross Cato, probably did not think that they would be below the cut line at this time of the year. No, and it's uh, it, you have to panic right now. I know you said we're only a quarter of the way through the points, but even if you're at Cam Patterson or Dylan Coyle right at the cutoff line, you have to panic. You cannot sit back and just say, hey, let's work it out. You have to go there and go hard and, and go for it. Now we're going to see here on track, by the way, the 19 car. And coming around here to start a lap at the start finish line. You know, Dylan, the one interesting thing about this track that drivers dislike or have a hard time with, maybe a better phrase, is throttle control is so important here. Well, that's the thing is this racetrack I mentioned sticking with the theme. This racetrack clocks in uh, at three quarters of a mile in length. Uh, but some will argue, is it kind of one of the bigger short tracks or one of the shortest super speedways out there, right? This racetrack embodies characteristics of both, uh, and it really does take um, quite a bit of effort to get around this place cleanly. We're taking a look live at our closed qualifying session. No, Burke, not the only driver who wants to put a lap time down. They're all just out there on track by themselves. You see Freenosh top of the board. Oh, there That's not going to be a fast lap. 19, giving it a little bit extra to the end of lap number two. His time will not improve. Burke stays at a 22.150. Let's see what Papanow has. He's currently 14th with one more lap around. He's on lap two. Yeah, let's pay attention to Papanow here. They're going to come off the gas right here. And let's see how long before he gets back in the gas here. Look at that. I mean, all the way through the corner before he gets back on the gas, Evan. And that's what happened to Burke was he was a little anxious and slapped that gas pedal a little early. And the car looped around. That'll be something to watch under race condition all night long here. Now we're seeing the 24 come around here again. This is on the front straight. There it is. There's your time for Davis. That's uh, P9 currently. A little bit of work to do. We'll see if he can improve second time around. Drivers using both laps. Davis 22-2-4-5 first time around. Let's see what it is. Second time for the Hasib Designs machine. He goes 22-2-8-2. So he does not pick up in his second lap. This is an interesting racetrack as we go on board with Mike Maddox because from above, looks well, pretty symmetrical. Uh, but it is worth noting that that start finish line, uh, very much kind of the antithesis of what you see in Talladega, Derek, is actually much closer right there to the exit of four than it is to turn one. Yeah, you do not get much of an opportunity to race this final lap or whatever lap you're on off of four. You really have to almost be racing into three. And there it is on the gas soon again. That's going to be the story all night. You heard the engine kind of rev up there as he started to lose the tires and that'll be a failed qualifying lap. And with that, the clock will tick down to zero. Any more cars actively on the racetrack with an opportunity to finish their laps, but it is quiet here in Richmond, Virginia. And with that, qualifying has drawn to a close. So let's go trackside and take a look at your RSR starting grid. And it starts with your top two from Bristol. Freenosh played bridesmaid to Agato Phillip two weeks ago, but tonight he's on a pole, 21-992. He'll bring us to the green flag. He will be joined by the 94 of Agato Phillip in second. Brandon Gass will start from third. Maverick Davis in fourth. They'll make up row number two with Sam Nieto to the inside of row three. He's next to the 53 of Austin Coop in P6. We'll go back to row number four, Ross Cato and that 12 machine next to Bradley Burke in the 19, that's 7th and 8th. Then Grant Davis in that 24 machine is 9th with Cody Harris in 10th. And then row 6 is Braden Whitaker and Thomas George in P12. 
Takes us about halfway home. Michael Araya gets the lucky number 13 starting spot in this one. And Mike Maddox in the XPM Chevrolet starting in 14th. Manazzi Major, a race winner from earlier this season. He gets to start tonight 15th with Eric Papano alongside in P16. And back on row 9, the 17th spot goes to Brett Larson and 18th to DeAndre Kane. Going back here, P19, the last car to turn a lap was Dylan Coyle in that 7-9 machine. And then we got uh, cars who did not turn a lap, Evan. That's Matt Danson, Chris Trepa, Jaron Weinmeister, and Steven Soa rounding out your 23 car. And as looked at the bottom of your RSR starting grade, let's talk you through this one here at Richmond. 200 laps and 150 miles scheduled race distance. Fixed setups on all of these NASCAR Next Gen Cup Series cars. There are no fast repairs available in the pits. And while you're down there, four tents, uh, sets of additional Goodyear sticker tires, full fuel capacity, three overtime restart attempts if it is required. And a little bit slow going for some of the drivers towards the rear of the field. We were just talking to pre-race as well. I mean, 200 laps here at uh, Richmond, Derek, not a short one. Uh, that car count in the mid-20s will likely help things go green. I think that is a good thing for the racing on track here tonight. You look back to Bristol just two weeks ago, that race only having two yellows with a field size of 21. Yeah, I was doing the math. I mean, if, if if we stay green, it'd be about a 65 minute race. But I suspect there'll be a couple contributing factors there that will uh, stop that from happening. We're going to take a two lap pace lap around here, Evan, is how we do it at the short tracks. And I think, as I said, the key to winning this race earlier, I said it, it's all going to be about throttle control. If you smash that throttle, hopefully you're on the inside if you do you can spin it through the grass and you can collect it but if you're someone on the outside lane and you smash that gas pedal too soon you're going to cause a lot of calamity out of turn four at richmond and of course Friedosh, been a while since he's been in full throttle real sim racing cup series victory lane what can he do agonel phillip to the outside has already got two checkered flags this year could he possibly try to continue a charge? Last season, taking home a championship, had seven race victories en route. Pace car off it in. As always, we're happy that you're spending your Monday night with us on Race Spot TV. Let's go racing at Richmond. scheme where they wouldn't allow somebody to do a split design like that but all goes here on a monday and trepa the second biggest mover in the field at plus nine has also been able to make his way through this pack yeah maybe my memory is not great i feel like that was one of the old jimmy johnson uh tribute throwbacks that had issues with that where there was different paint designs uh in real life nascar cup once the spotters go to see the car equally on both sides so they don't allow this whole split paint here but in rsr no issues there. Trepa, by the way, one of those cars you talked about, up nine spots since the beginning. So a great run for Trepa. He's also, uh, you know, continuing to kind of march through the field. No shock that Danson and Trepa, the two cars who did not take a time in the qualifying session, are the biggest movers. Obviously, they've got comfortability in what they've got on the long run, and you're on board of a Trepa now. Looking to match Danson's plus 10 if he can get around that 12 of Cato. Look at all of that chrome and spec map work on the 12 top side of the racetrack but the bottom seemed to be the place to be earlier when we saw mariah and the likes of other drivers fighting but not easy going there the 50 car can't make it stick has to pull back in line and he'll try to reset and try again as he looks to continue to move that roar esports forward through the field yeah, doing a great job here. Everyone's doing a great job so far, keeping these cars under them, knowing the power they have and the power they don't have. And, you know, it's been a pretty clean race. You know, obviously, you know, knock on wood, no no yellows yet. Here's a pass. By the way, this is going to be Trepa trying to get up under that car, and he does very easily and completes the pass there in turns one and two. So he's able to make the pass and uh, now looks to go 
on the inside of Danson. These two have followed each other through the field. Danson Trepa started 20th and 21st respectively. They haven't really fought with each other. I think much of that may be the reason why they've been able to get through the field so well is because they haven't been hindering each other. But it seems like Trepa feels like now is the time to crank that pressure up and is at least flirted with the idea of trying to make a move on Danson. And now back up in the battle for P4. Maverick Davis under fire. Cody Harris continues his march through the field in the drip design. Chevy trying to make it work on the bottom. And Coop in third, not that far ahead as well as those top two have checked out. No, Coop is definitely falling back. I'm not sure if the top two. Oh, a little contact there. I was waiting for that. It almost came to be last time out of the corner where Cody Harris has sort of bumped Maverick Davis. Let's see if it happens again here, Evan, out of this corner. And now that time, Harris gave plenty of room. But I'm not sure if Austin Coop has fallen back or if the front two have advanced forward. You see, Cody. Yeah. Yeah, certainly I think could be both, right? Or at least a combination of both. And that's that on board look with Cody Harris. We get every week. He doesn't seem too stressed, but look at those eyes. I don't think he's blinked since we took a look at the onboard camera there. And he's obviously focused in and trying to make this pass happen to the bottom of Davis again. Almost feels like Davis knows or at least thinks he can defend pretty well topside if he can get the run off the corner. He's not getting out of the way to block Harris, but Harris, you mentioned, they touched a couple of laps ago. That close call there, turn four, same spot. And I think finally now, Harris gonna get the job done. He does in a brief smile as he makes that pass. You know, and what I think was happening there was not so much of Cody Harris being, you know, super aggressive. I think both of these drivers are trying really to find a way around Austin Coop and around each other at the same time. And when you're trying to pass a car and deal with the car that's maybe falling off on lap times, uh, it can prove quite difficult in that moment there. Hey, you know, before the broadcast, we were talking about the evolution of live sports and, you know, how, you know, you doing Twitch rivals and whatnot. And I don't know if you saw today, but both the Ohio State spring football game and your Michigan Wolverine spring football game did. are going to be on live national TV this year. I saw that, and I know Cody will be a fan of that as... Uh, the, the fan of the Ohio State University and glad that uh, the defending national champions get the, <sighs> the same treatment on that one. I'm not, I'm uh, not going to stop. I'm going to milk it probably a couple years. I think a couple years is fair. That's probably fair. Because it's not like Alabama. You're gonna, it's not like you're going back. Year. No, well, yeah, like, like my Toronto Raptors are pretty bad, uh, but they won the NBA championship in 2019, so I'm, I'm still riding that wave. Do you know, I've never heard anyone else besides you ever say my Toronto Raptors. <laughs> There's a reason. And I, I say you ride that wave as a tie-in because the Rogue Wave Racing 53 of Austin Coop is under fire. Harris got the 15 at Davis, kept the car on the inside of the racetrack, and now he's got another one. And a race high P3 now for Harris. Yeah, that's a great job by Cody. He's now plus seven on the day from where he started. Really climbing through here. And I was taking a look at his last lap times. He is almost there as far as the leader. They're a little faster, but only by about a tenth of a second. So we'll see how he does. That time by, he was a tenth of a second faster than Andrew Freenosh. Here's a look now. Does the 15 car Maverick Davis follow suit? You also have to wonder, Agnell and Cody... Two very, very talented drivers at some of the top levels of this iRacing service. Coop was with them, if not at times pressuring Andrew for P2. Did he maybe use up a little bit of his stuff and has fallen off now? Yeah, probably has used up too much of his stuff and probably, you know, someone who planned us being a short run. I mean, when you come to a track like this and any kind of, whether it be league racing, official iRacing, you know, races or what it may be, a lot of times in the back of your head, you're like, okay, we're going to have X number of cautions. You have this mapped out in your head. You're like, I can race aggressive because of this. And then if that plan falls apart, it really does expose your game plan and the flaw within it. And that may be what's happened to Ross with all due respect, or uh, Austin Coop, sorry, with all due respect, is that he was expecting to be a couple, you know, contact issues, maybe some yellow flags, and that was not happening or really hurting his run. So now we'll see as we get into the longer end of this run, 
Do we see more drivers fall off? Do we see some other drivers who may not have dazzled us with the positions gained early? Gain three wide for a moment. A lot going on there. Top side is Mike Maddox goes two laps down at the same time that the Andre Kane was going one lap down. I mentioned it took a little while till we got to the lap traffic. Kane Coil both losing their lead lap status. Means that that traffic going to be more and more frequent. Steven Soa going to be the next car to get caught by Agno Phillip, but Agno's got about a seven tenth of a second buffer back to everybody else. So no need for him to rush into making those moves. But anytime as a lapped car getting around somebody wasn't the most comfortable spot to be in. So we'll continue to monitor that one all night long as the infighting between Danson and Trepa continues. Again, they've done such a good job of both passing 12 cars, but they've kind of stalled out a little bit using their tires up. It's about seven plus seconds off of the race lead, this battle for eighth. Yeah, and you see now Trepa is going to make the move to the inside here with Danson in the middle lane. Yeah, and look at that. Danson all the way out to the wall, by the way. Good job right there by Danson to gain that speed off of the wall and keep it moving. But yeah, these guys are fighting hard here. And if you're Trepa, you're really just hoping Danson sort of gives up and lets you by because you don't want to be side by side forever because that gaggle will form behind you and it will be bad news. Ooh, look at it again. I mean, to what Trepa racing with respect, Evan, but really racing close here. That's what I love about these guys. There's been a few instances tonight where we're not we're not hitting each other, we're not abusing each other, but uh, you should know I'm here based on the way they're racing. That's I think a, a fair synopsis for this racetrack as a whole. I don't know if modern day Richmond's going to give you the fireworks as a Bristol, but it gives you the opportunity to let the other drivers know that you're there. I think that's a good way to put that as uh, Danson continuing to try to fight, but Trepa winning out in the end for that battle. Now we'll see, right? Trepa had followed Danson through the field. Now that they flip-flopped, can Trepa pull away? Back up towards the front-ish. It's a battle for fourth position odd back, and it's 5.5 seconds off the race lead where Agno Phillips sits. Austin Coop, Bradley Burke, and Maverick Davis in that trio. Next car behind them, Michael Orion, not a part of the fight yet. Hits about a, a second disadvantage, but if these cars start to fight, he is in a prime position to try to swoop in as this time by and going to be quarter distance through this Richmond 200. Yeah, great race so far. Lots of close action. As I said, so far we're caution free, knock on wood, not 51s where we are. And everyone's racing pretty hard here. I and mean, this battle right here, as you said, this is with Coop, Burke, and Davis. You see Burke now is trying the outside. I'll be honest with you, Evan, unless you're just on different tires than someone else, maybe a pitting versus not pitting call, it's hard for me to believe you'll ever make a pass on the outside work here at Richmond on equal tires. I don't, I don't know that that's going to work for anybody. I think that's a fair point. And let's go on board with Ross Cato now as he looks up to the back bumper of Danson, the Altus Engineering Chevy's colors. Pretty iconic at this point. Could tell right away it was Danson from the bumper. That's the two of Sam Nieto to the inside again. But a, a different look on the two this time around with the Little Caesars colors. And Nieto going to try to go top side. Maybe a moment of hesitation there. I don't think he was sure if Nieto was going to come up or not. Uh, again, it's also just tricky to get the run off of the corner based on how that exit plays into that curved front stretch, which goes all the way from the exit of four down to the entry into turn number one. And now the 12 very clearly no longer threatening the two is going to have to hit the reset button and try again. He seems pretty calm. He's working the formula wheel. Yeah, I, I don't understand. Like, I, with all due respect to Ross and the other guys who do it, I know we see Bobby Zelensky do it on Tuesday nights in the, in the Coke series. I don't know how. I, I just, I, I couldn't imagine running that Formula Rim and being successful on an oval. I, I much respect, but uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, we look back up at Sam Nieto. You know, he's down a few spots here. He's down what five spots in this race seven. You have to imagine he was hoping that that setup would be hot and ready, but uh, it's just not, not coming to be right now. I was trying to come up with a good pun to come back to that, but I think he got me beat. That was a good one. Is He's on the inside of the 38 car of Danson. This is the battle for ninth and 10th spot. 
Advantage at the stripe to Danson, 10.747 seconds off of the race lead. Sam Nieto, 10.77 seconds off of the lead. And the two car now clears. So first time tonight, we've really seen Matt Danson trade a position back. It had been a procession through the field, but once Treppa got past him, look at Chris Treppa right there, that red and white car. He's checked out like we were curious if that was going to happen. And now Danson losing a spot to the two who he had overtaken not that long ago. Tells me the 38 car may have cooked what he had and uh, is now struggling as other drivers continue to march forward. He may have kind of hit that cliff. Yeah, you know, that's the case that's happening across the track. Now, you look at the track uh, lap times, seven, and up and down the board, we're now in the 23s. When this run started uh, 58 laps ago, we were in the 22s. So you can tell the track is slowing down, or the tires are slowing down, at least, on these cars. So almost everyone's down in the 23s. I know boards are not the 23s. I can see last time by was P3, Cody Harris. Hey, Cody Harris uh, continuing to try to kind of hold his own there uh, and in fact the last couple of laps hasn't been losing much to the top cars and in fact last time Harris was better than Philip and Freenosh now the problem is it's a 3.9 second advantage so beating those guys by a half a hundredth is only going to do so much but a good sign for Cody Harris race pace wise is there's the move to the inside Bradley Burke underneath Austin Coop Coop slipped to this number four spot a while ago, thought maybe he was going to kind of get pounced all over, had done a good job holding his zone, but it is coming to a crescendo now because not only is it Burke looking to the bottom, but Davis there looking to the outside as well. The flying V in turn number two and the 15 oh. forces his way to the outside. Oh, and I think I thought Coop got loose there, Evan. You saw the car kind of quickly get to the uh, bottom lane there off to the left. And I thought for sure he was going to lose that car, but he gathered it up. And that's been passed once here. Now maybe comes a second pass here. Wait and see here if Michael Laraya can make the pass. I was really concerned for for uh, for Coop. What was going to happen was they were all going to sort of form a line and just go by him at once. But that's not what happened here. No, not the case. Coop fortunately able to kind of defend once the one pass happened. It is not going to be the open floodgates. But uh, I don't think it's done yet as uh, Michael Araya has been able to get right there. The Sim Speed shot number 44 car. Longtime supporters of him and everybody here at RSR are going to go down to the inside and will tango again, this time in a battle for P5. These cars running more than a half a second every single trip around this racetrack, slower than those drivers up at the front of the field. So it's interesting to see that as Laria has got it. Yeah, anytime you're racing side by side with someone at almost any track, maybe minus a super speedway, the fact that someone else is there, the fact you're lifting not to hit them, the fact that maybe they're running the line you want, you're not tracking out as far, you're not whatever you want to do you're going to run slower so when these guys get back in line like this where Lariah is now ahead they might pick up a little bit of speed and leaders here but yeah i mean look at this i think now everyone's sort of settled now that the passes have stopped the gains have stopped you know everyone's just sort of in place now the question is when do you oh, hold on i started to say when do you pit and just like that here comes our first taker that's thomas george part of steel horse racing and this is, I think, as far as I'm aware of, in our first car down pit road, and there's a second one. And yeah, that's what I'm seeing as well. Second to car in, going to be Matt Danson. It's notable we are right at the one-third marker in this race. So if the two-stop strategy is going to be the prominent one tonight, this is about the time that the bank is going to be open. We'll see if anybody else comes down. Nothing from Philip. nothing from Freenosh. Curious to see if anybody could go to the halfway point and make it a one-stop strategy. Uh, it is also worth noting, even if you're thinking about a two-stop strategy, that may not mean you're simply going to pit right at the one-third marker. That may make sense, and it certainly does, but 
Some drivers may actually go a little bit longer on their earlier runs, so then their last or later pit stops can actually be a little bit shorter because they don't have to take on as much fuel. So just some of those things to keep in mind. Thought once we saw those two come in, though, Derek, it was going to be a mad dash, but no taker sense. We'll keep an eye, though, on the pit road entry. Yeah, usually that's those first couple guys are trendsetters in most oval races where once it begins, it'll happen. Now, what will happen is the drivers are going to watch Danson and George, and they'll be watching their lap times or how fast they get past or when they do pass someone, how easy does it look? And let me tell you, Evan, when you're in a race car and you get passed easily by new tires, there's a little bit of envy that kicks in and then makes that decision to pit a little bit easier than maybe what you were trying to hold out for. It really does. It's kind of like a, a clear visual reminder of how much time you are losing per lap. And we can you get back it up by numbers, but the visual uh, is, is very effective. Brett Larson down pit road. Let's talk numbers, though, and kind of give you an example on that. Right. So Matt Danson, lead car of those who has pitted last lap was a 22 146. Agato Phillip, your race leader, 23 079. That's one second per lap faster for the cars who have pitted. Again, they're not going to stay one lap a second, uh, one lap, I should say, per lap faster, one second, but that's going to gradually tail off. But in theory, if Matt Dance had pitted and then the car that he was running next to pitted five laps later, they'd blend out five seconds apart. Again, the tricky part is, well, then everything swings oh. the other way. But My what goodness, is nervous is this right here? Oh, and it's Minazzi Major getting tagged. <laughs> this is why you want to be careful about pitting, though, Derek. It's going to put you off of the lead lap. And it tends to bring sketchy moments like this when there's cars on different strategies. And I think Benazzi Major might have to change the fire suit after that moment. I'll tell you what, Ross, or not Ross, but sorry, Sam Nieto almost got hand tossed right there, right into the wall. That's what almost happened to him. But yeah, this is that danger. Now, to give a better perspective, if I may, that math you gave was best scenario of the one second. Take someone like a Sam Nieto who just ran a 23.65, that's a one and a half second advantage that uh those you know that those cars are going to have who pitted versus those who didn't so i just i i can't imagine with how the tires starting to behave that drivers can hold out much longer without pitting here I'm just kind of scanning the field to see where that and you know, an next cluster will come from um again some of this influenced by the fact that we've seen cars to pit road uh, but it is worth noting that there's only 12, 13 cars, I should say, actually on the lead lap still. Widemaster at the tail end of that. So it is a blistering pace that's happening up front. Agano Phillip has led every single lap of this race. And uh, Andrew Frinosh, uh has started to slip back a little bit between the two of them. That's about a two and a half second gap between the leaders. The biggest that has been at any point tonight. But... Again, this continues to be some good stuff. Most of this is for position. Some of the lapped cars have influenced the chaos, but most of this is battling for spots just at the tail end of the top 10 as Coop braises against the outside wall. And say what, when you're already running on old tires, the last thing you want to do is uh, scuff that wall and make those tires even a little bit more angry than they already are. On a side note, Evan, Dylan Coyle has retired from the race tonight due to internet problems. So he will not be continuing. Watch this again here. Is that Trepa, I believe, gets in the back of Nazi Major from that camera angle. And then it all sort of went haywire from there. I think is what we were seeing there. Yeah, I think maybe he also got a tad of the fence might have influenced it. It got really tight. That time off of two. And oh, you're going to see it there again. Into the wall that time goes gas. You referenced it earlier, how wide the racetrack looks. You can go way up here on the center of the corner. But when you come off... It really compresses in turn two, and Gas almost got ran out of road in the battle with Coop. And you now Brandon Gas continues to be aggressive on the outside line late in this run, making some passes as Gas is back up to the number eight spot. He started this race in third, fell back quite uh, quite quickly, and is now trying to make up for all of that lost time as he marches back through the field. You know, and part of the decision of when you pit, Evan, is not just about the data. It's not just about what lap you're on or what your lap time is. A lot of it's also you know, that emotional feeling. And I'll tell you what, if I was Austin Coop in the past five laps, I've scrubbed the wall. I've had a car hit me. I'm stuck in this little gaggle of traffic that maybe I don't feel comfortable in. That would probably help encourage my decision to come down pit road and get away from it all. 
and start fresh, but not for him. But here, there we go. There's Danson right there on the inside in that very, very familiar paint scheme you talked about earlier. Look how easy this pass is. Look at that on the outside of Coop, and he's going to complete it, if not before three, right there into three. Gosh, look at the difference. The power, the speed, the everything, the handling he just had. Looks like they were sitting still. That was like a multi-class race right there, Evan. There are some times where that's how Matt Danson looks on equal tires <laughs> compared to some people, but how good this guy is behind the wheel is so many different things here on the surface. And again, he is very clearly off strategy compared to the rest of these cars, having to pitted more than 16 laps ago now to this point. He'll split the gap there, high of the 24, inside of the 20. None of this is for position. Uh, Danson is 15th on the racetrack right now. Next car for position would be Steven Soa. That's going to be the uh, blue 75 car up the road. But again, Soa has not pitted and is off strategy and off cycle with him as Austin Coop and Chris Trepa get a new battle again for P10. Coop only continuing to sink the longer this green flag run goes on. Yeah, continuing to sink indeed. Here's a great battle here side by side. To think that we can do this on lap 85 here, or uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, lap 85 here is amazing. They're that close and confident. And man, Coop, just contact again and almost now contact with the car behind him in the 51. And Coop is just sinking little by little as this race goes on. We mentioned that the smaller car count may yield to some green flag racing and that has been the case since 36 minutes removed from the drop of the green flag and we are closing in on halfway home in this richmond 200 in which agato phillip continues to have led every single lap i think it's clear at least to me at this point that most cars get to go for the one stopper that window opens at about 10 laps or so Again, my math would be, eh, just do it right in the middle. 100 down, 100 to go. We're almost at that point. I think that's what we'll see the rest and the majority of the race leaders come in. Yeah, a lot of people prefer that, that easy, that symmetry of just having the predictability. And the best part about that, Evan, is that now you have that muscle memory thing. Okay, when the race ends 100 laps from now, I know how the car is going to behave because that's exactly how far we took the car the first time. So that could be the benefit here of doing that kind of easy number and making it happen. We see now Sam Mieto getting some pressure on the outside here. There was Brandon Gas there on the outside coming way wide. Whew. Some smoke as well. Thought maybe a slow car, but I think it's just going to be somebody brushing the fence on that trip down. No, there was an issue with Cody Harris. Big problems for Cody Harris. There is no caution. This race will stay green. I saw the smoke and look to the timing screen. Harris in third place. Contact with him and Manazzi Major. End of lap 88, coming to 89. That's a couple oh. of pieces of contact. Major, a lapped car. Harris, a lead lap car in that exchange. Looks like, honestly, with all due respect to Harris, just got a little impatient and wanted to get under Manazzi Major, but the front straight at Richmond is not the place to do that. There's not enough space and grip down there to make it happen, and they just made contact. Good on both of them, though. Got those cars under control on the bottom of the track and kept things moving here at Richmond. Now we're back to live racing, and Sam Nieto here moving up again on the inside here. That is the 24 of Davis on the outside. In the end, that costs... Cody Harris time he falls from third to fifth but his lap times across the affected laps uh, I think showing about a 10 second loss of time that is I think far more hurtful than just the spots on the racetrack that puts him from five seconds off the race leader to 15 and in a green flag run like this I mean you just you simply can't afford something like that no, especially in a race that maybe it might go green the whole time. Any small mistake gets magnified, you know, the longer this run goes on because it's just, it's damaged to the car. It's even damaged to a little bit of your psyche inside the car. It frustrates you. You get mad. And I'll tell you, Evan, while you're in the car, uh, drivers have a really long memory 
about what happens. And, and, yeah, and if you can't erase of, that memory, it'll it'll kind eat of crazy. It. Yeah, f funny how drivers can remember something that somebody did to you three and a half years ago at this racetrack on that lap, and you yeah. know they they will put that in the memory bank and they'll save it for later. Um, and certainly within the same race itself, if somebody wrongs you, uh, don't count on uh, having them give you a break yeah. later on at any point. Then as a team manager, there's a simple thing. It's like, you know, where your pit stall is, where our breaking point is. Uh, the simple things, no, we can't remember that. But who right. got you five years ago at Richmond? Oh, I got that written down, Pat. Race car drivers, uh, very unique in how they function that way. You can see Major again, always easy to tell where he is. He's got those familiar colors on that car getting lapped on the outside of the racetrack. Again, he also suffers from time lost to being in that contact with Cody Harris. He's now 20th position in two laps down. Agano Phillip, cue it up over the radio. Thought maybe that was an indication that pit stops are coming up, but he is not in this time. Uh, but we are on the cusp of being halfway home, and you got to wonder, Fridosh into four seconds back as Andrew, do you go for the undercut to try to take a chunk out of that time? Or knowing, listen, there's a decent chance we just went 100 laps green, are we going to do another 100? Do I need to save for the long run and maybe actually stay out longer, hurting him short term, but maybe trying to benefit long term? Fridosh has got seven seconds to the next closest car at Maverick Davis City to P3, so... There is very little risk to trying something here. It almost made me wonder if Freenatch was backing it off. We haven't talked about this yet, and I guess now we do. I was wondering if Freenatch was backing off to make sure he could, could get to the halfway points. Uh, that is the thing that happens here, of course, in the RSR full throttle you know, league, where you get those points for halfway in the top 10. So I thought maybe Andrew was backing off to make sure he had enough gas for that, but now we're there, so I don't know. In fact, it'll be this time by for Agno Phillip and Andrew Frenosh and company that are going to be halfway home in the Richmond 200, 100 down, 100 laps to go in this race. Just over 40 minutes on the stopwatch. It's a pretty good pace for a 200 lap race like this. Phillips lot times trickling to the 23-3 second range. Obviously the slowest he's been by a significant margin tonight. And now the question is, you've been able to accomplish my question of can you make it to halfway? So now the ball's in their court. Do you pit now? Do you try to run it a little bit later? Um, I was going to bring up a point, Derek, that maybe you want to have a little bit more fuel in the car at the end of the race because of overtime. But admittedly, four sets of tires in the pit box. If we do get a late yellow, you're going to have three sitting there still. I don't know if anyone would leave those on the table as we see Brandon Gass coming in. He was P9. And a caution. Oh, caution. caution. Right it's Cody as Harris. he hits the box. I'm not. Yeah, Cody Harris got turned around there. My first thought was I saw Manazzi Major on site. Thought what happened there, but that's not it. Cody Harris going to claim responsibility for the yellow. I think Harris lost it on his own after a grueling green flag stint that was just too much i think also he probably heated up those tires with that big slide that he had in the contact oh that's just little loose and as he tries to catch it goes hard back up and into the outside wall yeah i didn't want probably what's going to happen if you see in the in-car view didn't want to let the car slide to the inside so he thought he could grab it and tuck the wheel to the right and save the car and then Unfortunately, just watch this here. I'm gonna come here out into one. You can hear it. He's just gonna snap the wheel right about there, try to save it, and it snapped it too hard. Oh, that's a hard, hard hit and a hard, hard damage for Cody Harris, who'd been going all night long up in the top 10. Gosh, that does not get any easier to look at the third time by. Now here's the, oh, there, cause the scary part was in coming back across the track. There were some upset drivers in the radio about that and this i think is going to be bad news for the likes of dancing and others who had pitted at the one third marker in this race i don't think that they would stay out on 30 to 40 lap old tires and be at such a disadvantage i think they kind of have to pit here that would hurt their strategy because 
they had yet to pass all the cars that they had given up spots to to pit back. We'll see, though. Philip is already off of pit road. Matt Danson will stay out from a lap down, though. So he's simply going to try to get his lap back. So that goes back with the risk I had mentioned when we saw the near miss with the Benazzi Major, Derek, is even after 40 laps, Danson had it unlapped himself. And because of that, he's going to have to skip pit stops no matter what just to get back to the lead lap agono philip things a lot more uniform because he simply came in for four tires fuel and he's back out well now we can lean back into the old theory that you know you hear from racing commentators all the time that cautions breed cautions and that's what matt danson's hoping for is that this thing goes green and very quickly that another yellow happened that's what he's hoping for because it will not take long for this field to catch matt danson if he truly is staying out here and it looks like he is i mean he's not pitting his time by either so i mean it'll be a few laps evan but not long maybe 10 at most i would guess before the field catches matt danson with those difference in tires so he's hoping for a very quick yellow so that, that this sticks and he gets his lap back And looking, the lights will stay on on top of the pace car, so it's going to be at least one more trip around the sun uh, before uh, the lights will go out and we'll try to restart. But now the question is posed, you know, how does this affect the second half of this race? Um, we went green all the way from the start to the midway point. There is no reason to buy that can't happen again, but uh, part of me thinks the drivers are almost going to be spooked knowing, hey, this thing could go green. I could be you know, losing to my best opportunity if I don't make a move now, they may be more aggressive and this could be a very different second half. Alternatively, nothing could change and it could be just as good and long as a green flag stretch. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking in my head, I wonder if Andrew Freenosh doesn't, uh, I don't I don't say it's aggressive or is rude or is, you know, is mean about it, but I wonder if he's not quite as polite on this restart as he was the first time by, if he just kind of wants to push the envelope a little bit on Agno Phillip because obviously we saw Agno pull away. Agno's already secured most laps led. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, here, sorry, I got I got spooked here. That's all the wave arounds going by. I saw a bunch of cars going. I said, oh, I missed the start. No, that's just the wave arounds. So I got scared for a second. And but you left me alone. Me. Yeah, well, you know, it's a short race track. Everyone's gonna have to hustle around and with the lights out on top of the base car going to be going back to the green flag this time through agno philip and andrew frenage on the front row once more green flag in the air Spinners and a couple of cars into the wall. It's the nine of Widemaster. Oh, we'll wait and see what happened. But the big beneficiaries, everyone who just waved around, Evan, we just had that talk in the last yellow. Those guys all just secured their lap back. So that's, uh, you know, that's all those cars. That's, uh, sorry, I'm losing a thought. Let's see this real quick. I don't know if he lost it on his own, Evan, if he got a little bit of help from Austin Coop, but oh, just crushed Manazzi Major there up into the wall. Well, Nate's going to get going again. So I'm not sure if he just lost the car from getting on the gas too soon, Evan. Let's see it again here. This is from Coop. Coming out of four here. Nope, lost it on his own. Big gap of space there. Just lost it from getting on the gas too hard. And then Coop with the slightest, slightest of bumps. Well, now here you go. Matt Danson, everyone else who just took their lap back, Evan. They have secured that lap back. Watch it again here. Loose in front. It's a lot of smoke. You look to the high side, and that could have been worse. A little bit of damage on the front end of, of Stephen Soa's car. I will say, Derek, I'm a little bit upset by that because uh, I spent about six hours one afternoon painting that car for... The 75 of Steve Soa. Not the fanciest paint scheme in the field, but I, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Yeah, it's, it's hard to watch something you create get uh, 
<laughs> get crushed together like that. And it is, yeah, there's that beautiful paint scheme. We, we, in fact, we've seen you, I think, paint cars live on air before, if I remember right. I think you. I do. This was, was, was there, was there a Bristol? Was it Bristol where the, where the race spot logo was upside down, right? Was it the Bristol 500 or was Yes. It, yeah, yeah, the race spot logo was upside down, so we downloaded it from Trading Paints, tossed it in Photoshop, flipped it around, updated the paint. So it is a limited uh, talent. I think it's a cool looking car. It's kind of retro inspired. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's basic. It's it's simple enough for me to have done and taken six hours, even though it looks pretty basic. But I, I'm happy with how it came out. You know what? It, it's I'll a guaranteed way for Steve to get some TV time. It's legible. Uh, I'll give you that. It's legible. I know what that car says. It's clear fonts, nice colors, big font. So, yeah, there's some positives to this. Uh, it, you and know what? Unlike 75% of cup teams actually utilizing the number being forward for the sponsor oh. and not just leaving it all blank. There you go. I was going to say, you know what? If your client was happy, that's the most important part. Exactly. So Steve's rocking that one, um, and he'll be happy that uh, he doesn't keep getting the missing contingency panel penalties on a weekly basis because I have now finally given him his paint scheme that we had discussed. Um, so the benefit is he will now no longer get penalized for my incompetence. So that's a good thing as well. That's good. Hey, real quick, as we're about to go green here, the lights in the pace car out, something that we didn't get to note because it happened so quickly, that was an amazing jump on that restart that Agno Phillip had. He quickly, quickly, quickly cleared Andrew Freenosh and the rest of the field. I'm not sure if Freenosh was just caught sleeping or wasn't ready or if Agno's just that great on the restart here, but that was a, uh, that was a massive jump he had there. Is Agno we'll see if here? he can replicate that one. He's kind of driving uh, in the pace car. Uh, big Kyle Busch energy. If Kyle could just do that, I, I think he would in real life. He's kind of been known to mess with the pace car driver. The other question is here for Andrew Freenosh, too. I mean, what can you change? Uh, you were able to uh, qualify on a pole. Agno made the very quick pass on you. And then you hung with him for some time. But eventually he checked out. What do you do differently in this second trip around? Or is it simply going to be, uh, you know, maybe hoping that things swing in the other favor? I mean, what can you do materially? Are you hoping that, you know, Agnell's car is just a bit different? Or did he learn anything in those first hundred? Yeah, I think he's going to learn to be great on this restart here and to get the jump and to be competitive. If you let Agnell get out in front of you, it's difficult to get around him. So you need to be ready here on the start, ready to slam on the gas pedal and ready to move is my best advice here. See that up shot, up high shot part of me. See, they're almost even. I'd like to see Freenosh get a little bit closer to the even up, but I know it's hard to do an outside lane. Well, here we go again. The pace car off it in. Phillip in control for the inside of the front row. Green flag back in the air. Good jump in the lead to turn one. Here comes Davis for second. Great job here. Two wide back through the field. You see it in the back of the shot there. Everyone trying to make moves happen. But right now, Freenosh is under attack here by Maverick Davis, uh, Michael Araya, and others. Looks like Freenosh successfully again, defensive, yellow. but a spinner behind. And is it, a, it is again the nine of Windmaster, second time in a row. Harris also involved. Was that two incidents? I don't know. Now we're starting to get to the ugly part of this race where you're going to have to make moves and make them ha fast here because obviously it feels like we're going to have a hard time getting it green for a bit. We'll wait for the race spot replay machine to load up and see this incident here. There's a nine of the rye on the bottom. Or that's not right. Sorry, that's the nine. Going to get up into Nazi Major and just cause a big calamity. Is that two separate incidents or is that connected? I couldn't tell. I thought it was two at first. I think they're connected, and it was just the checkup uh, that sent Cody Harris up the road and across Whitaker's nose, trying to avoid it. Yeah. Uh, Windmaster claiming, by the way, responsibility for that one as well. Yeah, I need to get my names right. I said the nine of Leroy. That's the nine of Windmaster. Sorry about that. Um, let's watch it from this angle here. This is going to be on board. Oh, man, just came up, and I don't know. Just uh, the second time has happened to Minazzi Major tonight, isn't it? Where someone came up out of four and sort of got the back end of that car. If I'm a Nazi Major, the only thing I can say is, you know, I, I don't... It's not a justification to hit him, Evan, but he is sort of riding the middle of the track out of those corners. You got to track out there, bud. You got to get up there, you know, and, and give that space to yourself and others. 
Well, we had seen them get away with some moments of three wide earlier in this race, but they do not get away with it that time. And the unfortunate thing there for Widemaster, the fact that that is his second uh, incident that he has claimed on the night is that's going to get him a black flag. I don't know if that's going to hurt him as much as the fact that he's been involved in two incidents tonight, and that's already got him multiple laps down. I think that stings the most is simply the result of the accidents as opposed to the consequence for the accidents. But not the night that Jared Widemaster thought that he was going to be having tonight uh, after he uh, did not take a time and qualified, but uh, at least was a midfield car through practice and it just has not materialized for him and in fact as that penalty is levied he goes to the garage and wide master's night is done mm, it's hard to see so evan a thought is in my head right now you know i'm i love the different i love the different strategies and to be a little off kilter at times sinking in my head right now listen if i was someone on the end of the lead lap if i was a Braden whitaker a thomas george a brandon gas even a matt danson back in 10th what I ponder coming, it's been, what, 10 laps since we pitted. I know it's been mostly yellow. Would I come in right now and put new tires on again? Would, would I try something different to maybe secure myself a better spot at the end of this race? And the answer is yes, I would. Why not try it? And the cars on pit road right there, those are the ones which are in the wreck. But why not try something different? Obviously, Agno Phillip has the strategy locked in. You're not going to beat him at his own game. So instead of playing checkers, let's play Parcheesi. I can confidently say that that is the first time I've been invited for that uh, on air. Hypothetically, of course. To play Parcheesi? A hundred percent. You've got. Have you me. ever played Parcheesi? I haven't. Wow, you had a sheltered childhood, didn't you? Apparently, I'm just learning this now. Okay. I mean, we've learned it before. There's this whole not putting sauce on food thing. We can go back to that. Well, so uh, you know. That's a take that I'll stand by, though. <laughs> Fair enough. When I draw a line in the sand, the line is drawn. <laughs> I know that to be true. But uh, to play uh, portable cheesy or whatever it was. Hard yeah, cheesy. Oh. Port portal. oh, my goodness. <laughs> Listen to you. <laughs> Even our producer downstairs, Joshua Lee, is. Listen, Josh, Josh Lee doesn't. He probably doesn't even know what Yahtzee is. Okay. The, they have it. No, no. They have it on the iPad. He's just never touched oh, okay. the dice before. They, yeah. I, iPad kids can stay in the loop with stuff like that. <laughs> We're getting, We're getting yelled at in our ears. Yeah, no. Jared Wadmaster, as mentioned, has gone to the garage. No active penalty to be served. His night is done. He becomes the second driver to retire from this Richmond 200. Pace car off it in. Agatha Phillip has been oh so sweet on the inside line, and he does it again. Green flag in the air. It's a good jump, and big contact for second. Davis into the door of Freenosh. So what, the biggest jump right there was Davis on the inside back in P3. Quickly got up here on Freenosh just slammed on the gas, had it timed perfectly, and I thought he was going to complete the pass. Let's see here. Does he get it out of four? I'm not positive he will, but he's fighting for it. Maybe again through one and two, he'll have it done. So in the end, the challenge from Davis comes. Midfield, all kinds of funning as well. Common denominator, Agno Phillip. Love it what he sees in the rear view mirror because it's going to give the 94 a chance to run away. Davis not backing down side by side with the four-time Cup Series champ. Freenosh on the outside also will not give in. No, not giving in at all. Both these guys are side by side. They've got Lariah right behind him and a whole herd of cars, Sam Nieto and others. And so these guys need to figure out who's going to lead and who's going to follow because the longer they're side by side, they're going to let Nieto, Trepa, and others all catch up here. But right now it is side by side again through this corner. I thought by now they one of them would have had the advantage here, but they're going at it pretty full force here. Freenosh almost clear now, all the way top side, but the runoff of four, he has got it. Freenosh successfully defends, but has the damage been done as Agno Phillip opens up a big gap and now slow on the front stretch. The 24 of Grant Davis, slow and off pace, single car spin, no yellow flag with only one car involved. 
Yeah, great job by Grant. Got that thing turned around and got control of it and got it moving again. And then, and, you know, we talked in the beginning of the show about throttle control and how you can lose the car out of four. And as the sun's coming back out again here, the track will get ever so slightly more slick or more loose. And that becomes a little bit more doable than maybe what it has been in the past half hour or so. A lot of discussion as well amongst the drivers. We, if you're just joining us late, let's take a second look. The 24 car just on his own. Some cars get sideways center of the corner, but that early in a run, first time I've seen somebody lose it like that on exit today. But he really almost did a full 360 and just grabbed the gear and went for it. There was no, there was very little downtime in that spin. He just sort of did a great job there to Grant Davis. All right, Evan, well, 71 to go. A lot of drivers now have sort of made their strategy calls. But look at this, Michael Lariah back up to P3. Someone who I feel like we talked about a lot in the Icebreaker series back in the winter is now up here in P3 chasing down uh, Agna Phillip and Andrew Freenosh. Chasing down and trying to get into this conversation. It has been the Phillip and Freenosh story. Can anybody else insert themselves into that conversation? Or are they going to allow Agna Phillip to continue to, to basically put a whooping on him? I think is a fair way to put it. He has led every single lap of this race. That's 131 laps now complete. It would probably take me a significant amount of time to comb through results and let you know when the last time that happened was. Let's take a split screen look now. Battle up front on the top of your screen and on the bottom. Checking in with the battle with Chris Trepa and company as they were side by side through the corner and that's the 19 to Bradley Burke given chase now also trying to challenge yeah great battle on the bottom of your screen that's seventh eighth ninth and tenth that is uh what Trepa Burke as you said that's gas that's Ross Cato I think I saw us uh Braden Whitaker back there all battling for that spot so lots of tight battles going on there I mean at the top of your screen look at this I mean Agno Phillip I don't know what he's figured out tonight Evan other than just you know, open air is better than, than, you know, dirty air. I mean, he has led, I think, what, every lap or, or, or did Freenosh lead the first lap? Freenosh got lap one, or sorry, Philip got lap one. So Freenosh didn't get any of them. Yeah, so, I mean, Philip is obviously just walking away right now, having a great night. You know, is proud to show off that hardware in the background of his camera of the previous RSR wins and the title in that title belt and is proving tonight why he earned it just doing an amazing job here there's that belt look at that smile. big smile yeah look at that i Obviously. too would have a big smile if i had <laughs> those kind of trophies sitting next to my desk and if i had led 135 consecutive laps i would not have that smile if andrew Freenosh was on my butt but you know <laughs> to each its own yeah i mean yeah i mean in fact that you know, a once before the yellow, I mean, he had that up to what, like three second lead over Andrew Freenosh. When you can beat someone the caliber of Andrew Freenosh by three seconds, I'd be grinning all night long as well. I think it's all understandable. Again, because of the timing of the first yellow flag in this race, which came out for the Cody Harris self spin at lap 102, everybody on track, good on fuel. To the end of this race they've all since come down pit road the likes of gas whitaker dance and others have pitted on a more recent yellows and dance and i know this isn't going to maybe turn into the wind that maybe he was hoping his strategy call would have allowed derek but it is not all doom and gloom either for somebody who had gotten stuck a lap down based on when that caution fell in the pit rotation the fact that he's p6 on track uh, has shown that he's done a very good job of bouncing back with the pace he has. Yeah, done an amazing job. And what he has done to a certain uh, level is he's learned something for future races. You know, now every track is different. How your tires behave on a one-stop versus a two-stop two -stop can be different. But he has to a level learned, you know, can that two-stopper work at a track like this in the future? As you said, we come back here, I think, for race 17 in the schedule. So now when we come back, he may have an idea in his head about how happy he was with that two stop versus that one stop. So maybe not effective today, but maybe some good R&D for later in the season. 
We mentioned that date, uh, third or fourth, the last race of the regular season, a rare trip where we will double up on a racetrack with this 30 race calendar, essentially taking six weeks out of the NASCAR Cup one. Many of those dates that are cut are duplicate tracks, tracks that are visited twice. Um, so it is pretty rare, the fact that Richmond, both of their dates survive from that NASCAR Cup Series to Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series transition. Uh, continue to watch up front. Again, Freenosh lost a lot of ground trying to hold off Maverick Davis. He successfully did so, had fallen five tenths of a second back. He's back within three, so that means Freenosh has been better than Agano Phillip on this run. But sometimes when the talent that you're up against is Agano Phillip level talent, then I would say the same thing if those roles are reversed and Freenosh was having the same kind of night. Sometimes that two to three tenth of a second difference is all it takes to just get in a hole and be unable to dig yourself out of it. Well, and realistically, Andrew Freenosh really has two problems or two races happening here. Uh, Evan, he has catching Agno Phillip and then passing Agno Phillip. Those are two separate mountains to climb. Catching Agno Phillip is one challenge. Getting around him, ooh, that's like Mount Everest. It really is. And on a track that has proven to be somewhat difficult to pass at tonight, not to say that we haven't seen plenty of passing, but when cars are pretty close or, you know, in the case uh, when we were talking about Trepa earlier with Danson, took Trepa a while to get around Danson. Then when he passed him, he just checked out. Uh, when you see that and passing is at a premium and it is challenging, you do not want to be that car that is forced to be the aggressor. Let's jump back to the battle for the number eight spot. Brandon Gass has got it. Ross Cato wants it. It's about five seconds off of the lead. Yeah, great job here. Ross Cato has been up in the battle all night long. Currently P9 and doing an amazing job here. Almost near where he started. Started P7 earlier in the day. So trying to make that happen and trying to get around Brandon Davis or uh, Brandon Gass, pardon me. Gas has kind of been all over the racetrack and not in a you know, negative or out of control sense, but look at this, way high in three and four. That's going to kind of tantalizingly leave the bottom of the racetrack wide open for Ross Cato. Cato gets there. They basically get alongside, and then the 20 car pulls the run off of the corner. Now down here in one and two, it's the opposite. The 20 is going to the bottom. Cato gets almost all the way low, but he kind of diamonds the corner and turns in a lot later. Yeah, and look at that. I know like, now what we're talking about in the back of that shot, you saw uh, Austin Coop back there, and that car wiggled really hard out of that last corner. Wow, look at it almost pointed up towards the wall out of four. I think he's having a difficult time here. Just kind of listening to some of the drivers as they discuss handling conditions. So many of the drivers in this field have been competing with each other for years on years here on Monday nights in the Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series. And happy that you tuning in at home have joined us for this one as well. Some smoke there off of two, thinking that's probably kind of tire smoke levels of smoke based on what I saw. There's, there's no cars with some major issues that I can tell, so we keep going. But normally where there's smoke, there's a car sideways, not fire. <laughs> And then maybe a fire. No, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You did smoke. There's a yellow and there's something. You're right. But now it looks like here, by the way, that we've gotten these cars a little bit leveled off here. And we're now seeing that this is a little bit more handling come in. Maybe it's backed off the throttle inputs or done something here because that car is a little bit more under power than it was uh, previously. But man, look at Agno Phillip just now starting to slowly I feel like increase that gap here. And slowly leaving Freenosh behind, but Michael Lariah is ready to pounce if something happens in this run. That is the key, is be there waiting in the wings and ready to take advantage of the opportunity. We've seen self-inflicted errors, self-spins by the likes of Cody Harris tonight, Jaron Widemaster, very talented drivers, not to but the bad juju on the likes of Agnell and Andrew, but it is very tough. No matter what league, at what level you're competing in here on iRacing, it is tough to have a perfect night. It's tough to pitch the no-hitter. And Agnell Phillip continues to be on track, 
I almost feel dirty referencing that, Derek. It's kind of like saying the word shutout when there's still 10 minutes left in the third period. Normally always ends bad. Uh, I don't think Agano can hear me. I've knocked on wood. I've done what I can to absolve myself of sin. I'm simply relaying the message as he'll go down to the inside of DeAndre Kane, put another car, another lap down. But again, it, it just seems like it's hard to put it all together. And right now, all indications are Agano Phillip is plenty capable as we're now inside, this time by of 45 laps to go. And on the stopwatch, that's only going to be about, what, 12, 13 minutes if we stay at this pace. Yeah, not very long at all. So 45 laps goes very fast here at Richmond under green. And you're right. You almost feel bad using the words, would it be perfect game or shutout or whatever you got in your respective sport. But it does have that feeling where now, that, you know, the fans start to get tense and you're just kind of staring at it. And you know, you're thinking this is going to be it. This is going to be wire to wire, you know, referring to a baseball season or whatever you have that can make it happen here. But I mean, he has now opened that gap up about double what it was a few laps ago. The only question I have is sometimes when you get in the scenario, Evan, the lapped cars are a little less welcoming to the leader than they are to second, third, fourth place. It just makes me wonder if that maybe come up to a thing, but I don't think so. Unless Agno Phillip just really messes up in a corner or unless another pesky yellow comes out, this seems kind of you know, all Agda Phillips race to lose. And again, promptly knock on wood. And it's it's tough for Agnel too. I, I think he can be kind of more blissfully unaware if if that's a way to put it, um than than we are because he's simply turning laps, but those twelve second lap times start to feel like they're 22, 32 seconds long, especially when you get down to the end and it seems like this run following the same stint as what we saw earlier in the race, right? It was Freenosh challenging, Freenosh looking for the lead, and then 30, 40, 50 laps into the run, he just can't stick with him. And we're at that point now, 55 laps removed from the last time those cars were down pit road, that those lap times have swung back in favor of Agato Phillip, and he started to open up the gap again. Yeah, that's, you know, I always talk about sometimes there's this vortex of time that's not equal. If you're Agno Phillip, these 40 laps are going to feel like 40 minutes. If you're uh, Andrew Freenosh or Michael Araya, these 40 laps feel about like five minutes because you're trying to run him down. You're trying to close the gap. You're trying to do anything to make it happen. And time, it feels like time runs much faster when you're chasing someone down. When you're leading, oh my gosh, it lasts forever. Just kind of waiting to see what the next ball to drop is. Again, still razor thin margins at the top of the field. And there's your indication of those stints. We had talked about the one stopper versus the two stopper strategy. That on the bottom is not really how Matt Jansen thought this would play out, right? Pitted at 65. He was more anticipating to pit it again 133 and go the distance. Phillip probably would have pitted pretty much where he did, but go to the end. But again, it was that yellow flag and the timing of the yellow flag that allowed Agano Phillip to come down pit road. Danson could not pit with him at 104 because he was a lap down, had to stay out to get his lap back, pitted on the next yellow. So Danson actually slightly better tires than those cars in front of him. But again, the margins on the racetrack makes up for that and more. Yeah, the margins will make up not enough because it's really just one yellow flag difference between 104 and 111 is what we're looking at here. I mean, Agna Phillip now up over a second of a gap here to Andrew Freenosh, and then it's still Freenosh and Lariah fighting for second and third. It is the looks of this track today, Evan, for whatever reason, whether it's the temps, whether it's how the rubber has worn in, whatever it is, it just feels like passing here is at a premium, especially for a track only at 76 degrees air temp. I would think this track would be a little bit more grip friendly. See track conditions, pretty cool, partly cloudy, 84% humidity. Uh, I knew that when the drivers first got the session up after some maybe slight delays, which may have limited practice time uh, due to some hiccups with the iRacing service, their first comments were cold track, it's going to be fast. Yeah, you think that, and I'm sure some few of these drivers, Evan, are happy to see a dry track. A bunch of these drivers 
would have participated in the uh, iRacing 12 Hours of Sebring over the weekend and would have seen a few different bouts of rain happen on the track as the time goes on. Luckily, not the case here at Richmond. See the sun peeking out just a little bit as well. Uh, of course, there was a schedule shuffle earlier this year with the postponement of the Daytona 500 that forced Atlanta to get pushed back a week, Vegas to get pushed back a week, and I'm referring to these RSR races, meaning that the uh, idea of having these races be at the start of the week of official racing on the service um, was kind of not applicable to rounds two and three. We raced at the end of everything and following the cup race. This is a return to form because uh, we won't see Cup Series racing at Richmond till this upcoming weekend. Today is the start of the official week here at Richmond on the service. So that also further kind of eliminates practice time that would have otherwise given these drivers opportunity to kind of fine tune their cars and their strategies. Uh, it makes it more of a learning process here. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a split feeling amongst some drivers about this, Evan, because I mean, obviously, you know, if you're at Agno Phillip, you're doing great. And you're like, I don't need these guys having practice to try to kind of come run me down and put a run at it. But maybe if you're a Sam Nieto or if you're a Chris Trepa or a Brandon Gash who's holding on to the top 10, maybe you're wishing you had more practice time, you know, to get out there and run some official races and get a feel for this track and how the car behaves. I love the early racing. I think it sort of makes it more of a much more of a raw product, much more natural. But, yeah, I'm sure there's mixed feelings amongst the garage about how the schedule is built. Battle for fifth, another exciting one. We watch second, we watch fourth, fifth. Uh, you know, there's a couple of battles here and there. Um, you know, battle for ninth, 11th, 15th. There are groups of cars that have a sub half a second gap between each other, but they don't feel kind of overly ominous just with how difficult it's been in the past. The benefit is, yeah, there's only 28 laps to go. They're going to be at the tail end of one of the longest runs, uh, almost right at, you know, where we were when we saw the yellow at halfway and saw one of the best drivers in the series and Cody Harris get loose and self-spin. So these cars are going to be struggling towards the end. And I think we've got a paddle on our hands now officially for P2. Lariya has been stalking. And as Philip drives away, is it time for the 44 to go to work? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, the cars will hopefully have a little bit more grip because we had those little rash of yellows right at halfway that sort of will give them a few less laps on the tires under green than the first run. Be right as these as this run goes on, somewhere in the back of the minds of some of these drivers has got to be that detail. Hey, listen, Link. You know, Cody spun with like, you know, at lap 100 or near lap 100 and, you know, just lost the car. And that's got to be starting to get in your head a little bit about, you know, I don't want to do that. Will my car do that? And that sort of that that self-confidence begins to just dwindle a little bit as you get worried about it. Lap traffic up the road as well. That's the 51 car of Brett Larson, two laps down. Give credit to a lot of the drivers in the field here tonight. Only two of them have gone to the garage. Maddox Major, Harris, Kane drivers who are actively off of the racetrack with damage. Larson going to keep over the radio, letting those top cars know to blend on through. And now you're just kind of waiting for something to happen. This is where for Aggie to fill up those lap times really start to feel like they're dragging on. We've reached a point where... You're just kind of hoping that you don't hear the iRacing spotter cue in and you don't see that yellow flag pop up on your screen. Yeah, that does become a concern. And let me tell you, I'm not able to hear all of it uh, amongst all the other no uh, stuff we have going on. But there's a lot of conversation between Matt Danson and Chris Trepa. And I can't get the tone of it, but I suspect that something's going to happen on track. It might be near that location. It's a fair assumption as well as it is some of the closest bits on the racetrack again Danson had done a good job of bouncing back from getting stuck a lap down he has lost spots since then with Trepa passing him him and Trepa have been pretty even I'd give the benefit to Trepa on the long run I think this playing out as I would have expected uh, with Trepa ahead of dancing after another long run. And here we go to the inside of Freenosh for P2 goes Michael Lariya. Going to be tricky to make the inside work. Freenosh's key here is going to be to get the run off of the corner to mount that defense. 
And that's going to be tricky to do because if you get off that corner too soon, you can end up wiggling that car around. And they're both doing a great job of it here. Zoraya, of course, has the inside line. He'll try it here through the corner. And they're going to be side by side for a little bit here. And then up ahead will be that car that you painted. Let's see if who, if anyone, he gets in the way of. Hopefully it's only the cameras that Steve's getting in the way of with that beautiful look at a car. The, the nose still beat up from the earlier incident. We'll see how he decides to yield to the faster cars. And you can see he's already going to go up to the outside of the racetrack, let those cars go on by and checks up enough that not too affected was Lariah. I don't think Lariah was convinced Derek So was going to let him go all the way. So it gave him that top side on corner exit. The 44 was a little bit timid to go out there and that does add a little bit of buffer to the advantage for the 88. Well, you know, and it's sort of a uh, practice we always talk about with lap cars, which is be predictable, run your line and make me get around it. I'm not expecting you to let me by, quote unquote. And so when you do that kind of stuff, someone like Lariah is not expecting it anyways. It almost been better off if he just kept running his line. Battle for 11th, a trio as well. These cars, the last on the lead lap, may still be in threat to lose their lead lap status. As Agato Phillip is only about two seconds behind him, there they are. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen, but something to keep in mind as Davis kind of separating himself from what may more be a battle for 12th than it is for 11th with Thomas George in the Valvoline 6 car and the 48 of Brady Whitaker behind him. Yeah, and see the beautiful 24 here. And, you know, as I see this 24, obviously it's a, a tribute to a Jeff Gordon paint scheme from the past. But it sort of makes me wonder, Evan, if you have an opinion. I have a couple friends who really just despise the idea of flames on a race car. Do you have an opinion on this? Flames on race cars are certified bangers. I mean, that's a, that's iconic. Okay. I, I, and I'm with you, but I have, I, I have a, a quote-unquote friend, if you will, That's uh, who, believes, who believes I, that flames on race cars are cringe. I offended by that. Yeah, that's, we got to take, man, nah, that's, that's unacceptable. <laughs> it's just a bad take. I agree. I 100% agree with you on this. I, usually we're not in agreement on things, but this one, <laughs> we, we found we're it. locked up. <laughs> it's, it's like, stop, what, what we're just going to stop cars? here. What do you do as a race car when you, when you as, a, as a kid and you draw a race car? What do you put on it? Flame. Flames, because they're they're cool. Like it, now now I'm I, so, I agree. I'm worked <laughs> up. You should have brought this earlier. I would have been wired for the next <laughs> hour. Instead, it's going to go well into the post race, and we'll see. Lorai, I'm sure is tired of looking at that old black '88 Ford bumper. What can the Chevy driver do? Agno Phillip is going to soon be more than four seconds ahead of these. He has saved his best for last. Looking for race win number three and five starts. Can Lariah get a season best runner up or does Freenosh get bridesmaid for the second time in a row? Yeah, I think the better question might be, does Lariah choose to use the bumper here? Does Lariah want to use the old bump and run, the old rattle cage, the old get out of my way, the chrome horn? What are you going to call it? Or is Lariah patient enough to still see if he can make it happen without the assistance? He's on the bottom. He's tried this before, though. And this reminds me of some of the battles earlier on this race where cars would get to the bottom and the drivers up on the top on the side ground. didn't really seem that too worried about it. Like, they just kind of let them go there knowing... Listen, you're going to be too tight. I'm not going to give you the space. I'm going to get the runoff of the corner. I'm fine. I don't think Freenosh cares if Florian goes to the bottom. Now, you get side by side with somebody inside of the final 10 laps of the race. He might door you from the bottom. I'd be worried about that. But you know, that 44 car, he knows it, and he's trying to get to the outside. But that's tricky to do. Yeah, as we said earlier in the broadcast, it's hard to do on equal tires. It's hard for me to think you're ever going to make that pass work. Now, look at Agna Phillips. Still very you know, intense, very... You know, focused, kind of doing that bite the bottom lip move. That's a, it's a common trend that looks me when I race. I gotta admit, but getting around some lap traffic here and trying to keep it calm. But this battle right here, this is the battle in the race. And I think Evan, if Loria gets here with two to go, 
I think he's going to try to get some assistance in making that pass. I really do. It may come to that. In Fridosh's defense, Fridosh hasn't thrown any big blocks. So as Lariah, do you just go right to the bumper or because he hasn't given you yet an excuse can you can you do that or or do you have to continue to, to play nice and play with the kitty gloves for lack of a better term because andrew hasn't forced you into a spot where you can justify that type of a move six laps to go in this race brinage has been p2 almost the entire time michael araya on the other hand started back in 13th spot has driven through the field persevered he is the second biggest mover in this race, and he is trying to close it out with that P2 spot. Phillips already secured the most points for laps led, uh, the most laps led as well. He is now four and a half laps away from the perfect night. Yeah, not too far away from it. And I agree with you. I don't think Freenash has done anything to deserve having a chrome horn used on him, other than the fact he's as hard to pass and it is Richmond be the two factors here but then this confused me by the way and Lariah is now back down to the bottom but as you were talking there was probably two or three laps in a row where Lariah was swinging it way wide and I don't know if he's just trying something new or if he just thought he saw something but that lost him a bit of time on Freenosh here and I don't know if that's going to cause him maybe just to miss out on this altogether but it was pretty wide takes he was taking through those corners one more look that one forcing the 88 car wide as maybe andrew thought that lariah was going to drive it in deeper than he actually wanted to and it is on again with lap traffic on the horizon lariah the advantage as they come off a of turn four two laps to go let's see who uses this purple car as a moving pick there's steven solo on the inside as well Ooh, some contact there almost and let's see who uses who for a pick oh no Freenosh lost it trying to get around that lap car and that's going to give him the pass and I don't think Freenosh gets back around here in time to Lariah they just caught Kane at the wrong time and the spot goes to Lariah meanwhile up front it is the white flag for the two-time defending champ, Agnel Phillip had to fight off Rinaj at Bristol two weeks ago. He's going to go three for five to start 2024. Agnel Phillip pitches the shutout, leads every lap, and wins at Richmond. Well, Evan, if you look up the word domination in the dictionary, that photo right there, we're going to put that right there next to that definition because that was pure domination all night long. And you saw he cross the stripe and uh, wipe some, spread, uh, some sweat off his brow. Long green flag runs like that can be physical, even in a sim race. And Agatha Phillip, impressive stuff as he continues to show that he gets better and better. And there was a time not all that long ago when Andrew Friedosh had won his fourth RSR championship in the Cup Series where we thought that some of those records, some of those accolades may never be matched. Well, this man's got two, and he is very clearly looking for number three here in 2024. Celebration is on, on the front straightaway. Let's take a look at our RSR full race results tonight. Agatha Phillip taking home the checkered flag, a final margin of victory, 5.4 seconds over Michael Araya and Andrew Freenosh. That late moment with the lap traffic forces him to settle for third. We'll talk with them in just a moment. Maverick Davis and Sam Nieto round out your top five with Chris Treppa, Brandon Gass, Matt Danson, Bradley Burke, and Ross Cato. Your top ten. Picking up here at P11. We'll take a look here. This is the last card in the lead lap. It is Grant Davis. And then one lap down is Thomas George, Braden Winokur, and Austin Coop. And then two laps down would be Eric Papineau and Brett Larson. And then more laps down than that, Steven Soa, DeAndre Kane, Cody Harris, Minotti Major. And then rounding it out, Evan, will be Mike Maddox, Jaron Weinmeister, and Dylan Coyle, your 23 cars. It's a look at the bottom at your full race results. Let's see if we can get a word now with tonight's race winner. It is another checkered flag for the man, Agnel Phillip, your race winner tonight at Richmond Raceway. Agnel, 200 of 200. Let's Lance go. led the perfect night 
here in Richmond, Virginia. Congrats. Thank you, Evan. Yeah, that was uh, that was fun. Yeah, it was uh, you know fairly uneventful race from from my seat, but um, yeah, I'm sure it wasn't a great was a particularly thrilling broadcast. But um, yeah, we'll we'll take we'll take those uh, drama free ones when we get them. You tell us about it. I mean, you start from P2 next to Andrew. Immediate thought is, you know, we look back to Bristol. You guys were right there at the end. And at least out of the gate, you got the jump on him. But he was all over the bumper for, I'd say, 50 laps. And then it started to build the gap. And it seemed to be the same thing in the second half. Yeah, um, I think, uh, you know, that was that was huge getting the, the lead off the start there. Um, I think he just got a bad jump and then, you know, he just wasn't able to to clear me into into one, and then from that point, I was able to kind of control it. Um, and that once you get once you get in front, um, it definitely becomes um, kind of a different different race than if you're in traffic. You kind of just I was just trying to keep the distance constant until I started pulling away um, naturally, and then once that happened, I you know I kind of especially towards the end there, I could kind of run whatever pace I wanted to, but. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely very. I was telling, I was telling Cody, um, you know, it was even running at a kind of more conservative, you know, hold on to it sort of pace. Um, there's still this track requires a lot of focus, especially with the way the set is. It's one of the the better tick sets that that I've driven, so definitely had fun with it. We saw Matt and a couple of other cars pit at the one third marker in this race, seemingly indicating they were going to go for the, the two stopper strategy. Obviously, the yellow coming out at halfway kind of nixed that. Was that something that you were all, at all considering or did it seem pretty straightforward from your perspective? I don't think so. I think um, I think it would have. I mean, I, my lead was big enough at that point that I think um, the one stop strategy, even if it was a little bit slower, which I don't think it was. Um, but even if it was, you know, I think I would have had enough of a cushion to to make it back. I was gonna I was gonna run it out, so I never got trapped uh, a lap down. Um, yeah, I mean, I was actually kind of surprised. I think um, as as that run was going on and those guys with fresh tires would catch me, um, they were actually kind of struggling to pass me. Um, and I, I that to me really sealed it. It, it definitely seemed like that was not gonna be not gonna be the way to go long long term. Um, so the only way it would have worked is, you know, if I had, if I'd pitted, I probably would have come in around 120 or so. It looked like was, was when my fuel was going to run out and there was going to be some period of time in which somebody else was going to have the lead and I was potentially going to be a lap down. If caution comes out then, then it, then that's what messes you up. But, um, definitely, definitely ended up not being relevant to the, to the final results here and we're able to just kind of run the pace that, that we wanted to and, and never really had to worry too much about what was going on behind. It's a good start to the year. Three checkered flags for you. You got seven in 2023. Is there anything different that is clicking particularly well for you this year? Or is it just kind of the continuation of the work you've been putting in? No, I think it's similar to last year. In fact, I think around this time last year, I had um, two or three wins. Um, around the around this point of the season and then we had kind of that influx of kind of the the um the really good you know pro level drivers and kind of hit that mid-summer stretch that i always seem to struggle in um and and just didn't win for a while you know so that definitely seems like yeah, that's still you know i'm in but it's still a possibility i think there's you know any number of guys that could could show up uh, even guys that are currently showing up like michael looked like he had some good long run pace today you know, Drew's always um, Drew's always really, you know, really fast at a lot of these places, and and Matt had some trouble with the strategy, and Cody had obviously his his wreck, but you know, it's it the the competition's gonna you know ebb and flow throughout the season. I think right now we're in a little bit of a of an ebb uh, with it, so um, you know, we're taking advantage, trying to build up some some cushion for that first stage of the the playoffs, so that we don't have to worry about. Um, you know, making out of the round of 16, but um, yeah, you know, just trying to have fun. I think it's it's a nice little we, we were able to to change it up with having these races. You know, the week before the official series um, go there, so I'm kind of hopping into these races a little bit uh, less sure of like what what's going to happen, and um, you know, it's been fun. 
And we look forward to seeing what is up next. But uh, until then, Agno, I know this was uh, a long one for you, being behind the car, minimal yellows, and uh, working hard throughout. So we'll let you get out of here. But as always, appreciate the time and congratulations. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, Evan. To race winner tonight from Richmond, Agno Phillip has done it again. Let's talk with the next two drivers up first, Michael Loria with the uh, late move in this race to steal P2 away from Andrew Freenosh. Derek, you're going to be with him. All right. Well, catching up with Michael Loria. Michael, up 11 spots from where you qualified to finish P2. Man, that was a long run, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. And uh, that's exactly what I needed. Uh, I'm definitely a long run style of driver and uh that's what i really needed tonight i uh mess up qualifying i spun out on my lap one coming to lap two right off of four and and just it killed me so uh i knew i had pace tonight but it was definitely a little bit discouraging uh throwing away qualifying like that so um I needed the race to go green for a while, and luckily it did, and it, and it kind of worked out where just I was able to get in that rhythm and, uh, you know, work myself up towards the front. And then we had a caution really right at the perfect time for me because I was just thinking about getting ready to pit, and then that caution came out, which saved me, and then I had really good track position from that point on and uh, just you know, doing what I can to stay in touch with Andrew there and, uh, Agnel, but, uh, Agnel just had us covered tonight. His pace was insane, uh, about 30 laps into a run. So I, I felt like I finished where, where I probably deserved to finish. Um, I was happy to get Andrew there at the end too. Um, he was doing a really good job just being able to hold me off there, but we we're both talking about it just before I stepped in the booth. Like we were, we were both doing what we needed to and we were racing clean and we, we had a really close call with a couple laps ago getting through the uh, lap traffic there and uh, we both uh, definitely uh, practiced some give and take and we were saying you know at that point we didn't want to wreck each other because we were doing so well up to that point so it, it, it worked out in my favor. Yeah it looks like it did. So another question we'll ask you tonight uh, you know you qualified you know, mid pack, you qualified back, uh, what, P12 ish. Is there anything, this, this being one of the few tracks we're going to double dip on on the RSR schedule, what can you take away for next time qualifying to put yourself further up in the field? Um, I would say next time, uh, definitely get more heat in the tires, uh, like on my uh, takeoff lap. Um, do what I can just to build up some air pressure to give, give the car a little bit more stability. Um, I mean, that that's if, uh, who knows with how the setups may change at that point uh, later in the year. But if all things stay the same, then uh, that's definitely the approach I got to take. I just uh, was not comfortable on the lower air pressures and it was real easy to get loose, especially coming off of four. So um, that's what I would work on. Maybe take it a little bit easier too, at least my lap one. And then I uh, would be in good shape for lap two, which is the money lap. All right. All right. Well, listen, great job tonight in the P2, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, thank you. We'll continue down the running order with your third place finisher, Derek. It was almost Andrew Friedosh's P2. Lost it with about two laps to go. You're with the driver of the 88 car. Andrew, P2 most of the night, and then. Those last couple of laps battling side by side, you sort of lost it. What happened there? Did you just get spooked by the lapped car or, or what happened to you? Uh, yeah, we went into one and um, uh, 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 Michael there was uh, close enough that I don't know if he took the air off my spoiler or I just overdrove it. It just kind of slipped up the track. He got to the inside and then, uh, you know, we were battling. We came up on those lap cars. Uh, we were three wide and um we were kind of coming off at two and there was one against the wall i really didn't want to wreck both of us um michael was faster so i kind of backed out of it and then still almost wrecked myself so we just kind of play it safe you know come home with a top three and then move along yeah very great result talk to me about the challenges of restarting p2 at any track especially richmond it felt like one of the times that agnel sort of just really beat you tonight was on those restarts how hard is that task to start p2 and what could you do to be better at it 
Yeah, um, that initial start, I didn't know it was the first gear start, so that kind of um, set us back from the beginning. Uh, you know, I don't think we had anything for Agnel period, but you know, it would have been a little helpful to be out front, maybe not get so arrow tight behind him. But um, yeah, starting the outside, it's tough, especially here. The outside lane never came in, so you want to get to the bottom. Um, it's kind of easy to pinch the guy down. Um, if you catch a caution in the wrong spot, you're going to restart third, which um, kind of would be even worse. So you kind of pinch the guy down, but you're, you're killing your tires for three, four laps so you can clear them and then get to the bottom. So that's kind of the disadvantage of starting up there. Yeah, it is a very hard, hard task. Well, this being one of the tracks that we do double dip on the RSR schedule, we'll be back here for race 17. What did you learn today, if anything, that you think will make you more successful uh, on race 17? Uh, I got a lot of work to do, that's for sure. Um, this is a track I usually do really good at, and uh, we struggled tonight. Um, you know, third is a decent finish, but we we, uh, we were way behind Agnel, so um, got to go back to the drawing board, figure it out. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable in the car at all. The brakes did not feel right to me. There was just, you know, there's a feeling that I like at Richmond that I did not have tonight, so got to do a little more practice, got to, uh, you know, kind of write in the book what happened and um, see if we can uh, improve it next time we come here. Well, listen, the P3 is still a great run regardless. Great job tonight, and we'll see you next week in RSR. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good week. All right. Thank you, Andrew. That is Andrew Freenosh. Finishes P3 tonight, Evan, here at Richmond. And a big thanks to him and the rest of our top drivers for giving us a chat. And for the first time in RSR history, it is a max points night in terms of pull. The most laps led, or I should say laps led, the most laps led, midway bonus leader and in the end i think that's going to mean a 53 point plus night mm -hmm. for agonal philip uh that's really impressive stuff again freenosh first poll of the year but agonal leads the way and these drivers will enjoy a week off derek until we're back in two weeks time our one and only trip coming up next round six at the texas motor speedway kicks off a string of three straight weeks of action texas dega and dover on the docket yeah three very different tracks and just loved his texas track very very excited for there is the details in two weeks time at 8 30 p.m eastern and uh i'm excited for it we'll have to wait and see if our race winner tonight can go back to back and we'll see if uh, anybody has got something for the two-time defending champion at Agato Phillip. But until next time, that is it for us here tonight from Richmond. On behalf of our entire team at Real Sim Racing, Race Spot TV, and your broadcast team tonight. For our producer, Joshua Lee, for Derek Watson, and myself, Evan Pasoko, I want to say thanks for tuning in, and congratulations to Agno Phillip, who is picture perfect tonight in Richmond. As mentioned, we're back two weeks time. That one Monday, April the 8th from iRacing's virtual Texas Motor Speedway. That race and every race of the 2024 Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series can be found exclusively here on Race Spot TV. Till next time, good night from Richmond.